everyone, it's Eleanor Rose again, and today we have some really exciting news to share with you. Our paw squad has grown by four paws because we got a new dog. And I am really excited to introduce him to you and kind of explain um, where we got him from, how we found him, why we picked him, and why we decided to add a new dog to our family. So stay tuned to uh, figure out how you can do the same thing to find your dream dog at a shelter. So I am a dog lover. I love all dogs, but as my shirt says, rescued is my favorite breed. Um, I am a huge advocate for rescuing dogs, not only because I work at a shelter, but um, just because it makes more sense to me um, in general probably actually because I work at a shelter, but anyway, um, huge proponent of rescuing versus um, buying from a breeder um, for multiple different reasons, which that's kind of a different video about the whys. Um, but one thing that I hear all the time when people come to the shelter um, or online, because I'm part of several different like Facebook groups that are for people looking for um, to, to purchase a, a, or adopt a dog, um, one thing I hear all the time is like, oh, well, you know, the shelters don't have, you know, the dog that I want because I want a purebred dog or I want this specific mix of dogs or I want a dog that's already trained to do X, Y, or Z. And I'm here to tell you that you can absolutely find your dream dog in a shelter somewhere with very few exceptions. 99% of you folks, if you're looking for a specific breed of dog, if you're looking for a specific mix of dogs, if you're looking for a dog that is trained to do X, Y, or Z already, you can find that in a shelter dog. You just have to spend the time doing it. Um, so for me, I have always, always had a thing for German Shepherds. Why exactly? I don't know, but I just thought they were really, really cool. And I always wanted one. Um, growing up, my parents didn't like them and we already had dogs and we just never, never got one. Um, and then when my husband and I moved into this house in San Antonio, um, it was one of, one of the breeds I thought about, but he really wanted small dogs. Um, and we do have a decent sized backyard, but it's not, um, you know, like the acres and acres that I would really like to have uh, for a big dog like that to run around on. So. Um, we decided that we would put it off until maybe we had more land one day or whatnot. Um, but some circumstances came up um, in the last eight or nine months that um, led me to actually be looking for a service dog for me. And after lots of research and lots of contemplating, I decided that... Um, one of the breeds that I would be uh, looking for would be a German Shepherd because they have um, been used as service dogs in the past. They're extremely intelligent and I always wanted one. So, and uh, if they were gonna be with me all the time and they were gonna be highly trained, it, the, you know, not having acres and acres for them to run around on, um, they would have a job to do. So that would um, be an appropriate use of their energy and their enthusiasm. Um, they would have something to do and not be bored. Uh, so we decided to go ahead and start looking with the help of a trainer. And I spent hours on the computer uh, looking and every day at work, I'd you know, like perch at my desk and be like, okay, maybe this German Shepherd that I'm looking for is gonna come in. And every time one came in, I got really excited and you know, had to evaluate it. And it was, it was really difficult to not just adopt every, you know, beautiful shepherd that came in because I was looking for one with really specific criteria. They had to be good around other dogs. They had to be good with people. They had to be good with loud noises. They had to be trainable. They had to be, um, you know, already housebroken because I, I, I didn't want to do that. Um, and they needed to be very healthy, um, all of these things. And so I, I looked and I looked and um, a lot of the, the dogs that I looked at, um, weren't quite right for one reason or another. And then finally I was scrolling through and I found this listing for Rufus, which is not his name. Uh, we will put at the end of this video uh, what will reveal what we decided to name him. 
because uh, I took a little video of his name tag being made the other day. But uh, Rufus is what the shelter decided to call him, which doesn't fit him. And uh, he popped up and it said he was heartworm positive. And I was like, well, I don't know a whole, I, I knew like the basics of heartworm and I knew it was a really expensive treatment and something, he was, he was so beautiful in the picture that I went ahead and clicked on it. And I called the shelter and asked some questions and I decided to go ahead and meet him. And so we went with my dogs and met him and he was pretty good. He was a little bit, had a lot of energy, a little bit anxious, kind of pent up, had a lot of energy, but he wasn't aggressive with my dogs. He wasn't, um, you know, like crazy spastic uh, energy. He just was really excited to play because he'd been cooped up, you know, in the shelter since um, this was, we, I went in in uh, mid-January and um, he had been in the shelter since early November. So he'd been there for a good while. And I started asking after I found out that he had been there for so long, I started asking him, well, like, why is he, has he been here for so long if he's this great dog that, you know, is already potty trained and knows how to sit and, you know, isn't like a typical crazy spastic, um, you know, like puppy. And they said, well, he's a little bit older than what some people wanted. They, they had him at the shelter as four years old. And they also said, we, we won't adopt him to anyone who lives in an apartment or doesn't have a yard or isn't kind of an experienced dog owner because shepherds, they blow their coats, they have, you know, hip problems sometimes, and they just have a lot of energy that you kind of need to be really um, focused on working out. Um, so, you know, they, they wanted someone with some experience and, um, a lot of people also were really turned off by his diagnosis of heartworm and knowing what I knew about it, uh, even though it was something that was going to be expensive to treat, I knew we were up for it and he would have, like ticked so many of the other boxes of being friendly, of being dog friendly, of, you know, not being food aggressive, of being trainable, of being, having energy and drive, but not being like crazy that even though he was heartworm positive, um, because I knew that wasn't going to affect him long term, he didn't have bad hips, he didn't, um, you know, have, you know, a, some other disease or some other condition that would affect him, uh, really long term, because he was only very lightly heartworm positive, um, as well. Um, we, we decided to have my trainer evaluate him and my trainer evaluated him once and said he seemed good and then we both went back and evaluated him and decided that he was going to be my service dog candidate. So we went ahead and adopted him a week ago and he's been pretty good for a dog that's on crate rest and doing his heartworm treatment. Um, he does get a little frustrated in his crate but other than that he's really a fabulous dog and we were just floored that we were able to find this, you know, although he doesn't have like AKC paperwork because he was found as a stray with no microchip and nobody ever came to claim him. Um, he's, I'm positive he's purebred because he looks like a purebred German Shepherd. He's friendly, he's housebroken, all of these things that I wanted. And I just had to do a little bit of looking and a little bit of searching. Um, I also did get lucky because the dog, the particular kind of dog I wanted is popular where I live in Texas. Um, we see quite a few shepherds and shepherd mixes um, in shelters because they're such a high energy dog and some of them are escape artists so they get out quite a bit. Um, so I was fortunate that there you know was quite a few to choose from um, but we were just so excited to walk into a shelter and see this gorgeous handsome dog that had you know all these things that we wanted and to actually end up paying nothing for him because he was already sponsored um, through a program they had at the shelter. Um, so that's how we ended up with Rufus, which is not his real name. <laughs> um, that's how we ended up with him. Um, and I am 100% convinced that if you just do your homework well enough, you'll be able to find a dog to fit your needs. Um, there are some rare cases, so like if you're looking for, um, a, you know, a rare d dog breed, like, I don't know, a feral hound or, um, 
I'm trying to think of some other dog breeds that don't have a lot of rescues. If you're looking for a pharaoh hand or a pharaoh hound or um, a Swedish Valhund or you know some of those crazy um, a Puli, the the ones with the the corded coats. Um, those, especially the like the European breeds or the um, the breeds that originated in the Middle East are harder to find because they're not very popular in the U.S. and because they're not very popular there's not very many rescues for them so you may have to look a little bit of a wider net if you're looking for a more rare breed but if you're looking for a German Shepherd, a Golden Retriever, um, a Poodle, a, a Yorkie, a let's see what other dogs have people come in requesting, a Cocker Spaniel, um, pretty much any dog breed that has a, a decent foothold in the U.S. and even a lot that, that don't, um, and even some of the new breeds, so like all the, the doodles that everybody is crazy about, um, separate video about why I dislike doodles, but that's separate video. Um, you can find a rescue for them and go through them to have them either alert you when a dog matching your criteria comes up or go, you know, just yourself keep checking back to see what they have. Um, and another really awesome thing about breed specific rescues is that they typically know their dogs really well and they know the breed really well. So if you should not be adopting, for example, a German Shepherd or a Husky or whatever, they'll, they'll let you know <laughs> what the problems are and uh, they will be able to kind of evaluate what temperament of dog you would want and, and things like that. Um, on the other hand, you know, I, I didn't go to a breed specific rescue to find um, Rufus. I just happened to find him um, in a municipal shelter um, and just there he was sitting there like it was meant to be. Um, but he was heartworn positive and that's why he kept getting passed over. So um, another tip for being able to find your dream dog is, you know, be a little bit flexible. Like maybe you need to foster them for a while because they have some injuries that they need to get over or maybe they're heartworn positive or I don't know, uh, maybe they're blind or deaf. Uh, those are all things like that people don't consider, but they can still make amazing dogs and that's a great way to get this this amazing dog that you're looking for um and and not have to to buy from a breeder um and also disclaimer i'm not saying all breeders are bad there are some really awesome people who do great things for their breed and who are really responsible but i think so many people automatically assume that if they want a purebred dog they have to go and buy it and there's nothing they can do like it's just not gonna happen in a shelter and that's kind of like the point of this video is if you want to rescue a dog and you want it to be a pure purebred dog you can find the dog that you are looking for um i always encourage people to be open to breed because you may find the dog that you weren't expecting um but if you are set on a breed or you know a color or a male or a female or whatever like just go and look and take your time to do your research and you know so many shelters and rescues have online databases now that you can go through uh, for my shelter ours is updated every hour so you you know like real time can scroll through and see what we have at the shelter and you know, that way you can be the, the first one there to, to snag up. Um, we had a, a Dalmatian, a liver spotted Dalmatian come in uh, earlier this week. And some lady was, was very excited that we had this dog come in. Um, so you just kind of got to, you know, be, be watching and waiting and cast your net very wide. We, in particular, were, were willing to drive. We had to drive um, an hour to go and get the, um, the dog that we got. Um, but it was, it was totally worth it because he was everything we were looking for and it just feels so great to know that we rescued him and that we didn't have to, uh, raise him from a puppy, which is not something that I wanted to do. 
Um, and it wouldn't have worked for the situation either because um, I need my service dog sooner rather than later um, for my health conditions. And so this, this was the route that we decided to go and I highly, highly encourage you if you're looking for a purebred dog um, or if you're looking for a certain type or a certain color, or, you know, whatever criteria you have, do look in shelters because you can find them. It happens. I got this wonderful, amazing dog just by being patient. So, all right, so now that you've listened to me lather on about uh, finding the purebred dog or a certain type of dog in a shelter, we're going to reveal the name of my beautiful, amazing, furry love of my life. So we'll roll the clip. Yes, his name is Dexter. Um, I think it was someone in your family that suggested it, right? Yeah, so someone in my husband's family, um, I think it was my brother-in-law, so thanks Ben, or whoever, <laughs> whoever suggested it, thank you, um, suggested Dexter, and we both thought it was hilarious because it makes you, reminds you of the, the serial killer, and one of the things I had expressed to my husband was like, I don't want any name like Cujo or Killer or, you know, some like big hefty um, scary name because he's going to be a service dog. Um, so I love, I, I just, I thought it was hilarious that his name is Dexter, which is like a cute dog name, but then it, it's also like, yeah, his, so his, his unofficial nickname is Killer because um, his name is Dexter. <laughs> But yes, his name is Dexter. Um, the shelter listed him as four years old, but my vet says he is no older than 18 months. And I agree with that because he's very much uh, has some of that puppy personality in him. And uh, we're gonna bring him up here so you can see him. 